All right, Team Earth, huddle up. In this video, we're going to focus on the one thing everyone needs to understand to beat the climate crisis. What is this one thing? The first gigawatt down. First gigawatt down. You've got your first down and you've got your gigawatt. First down is a football term. That's right, football. Football is a game where you run a ball down a field. The race to zero carbon is a lot like that. It's a game where your whole state runs your carbon emissions down to zero and sequesters it in the fossil fuel end zone. In American football, you earn points when you move the ball all the way down the field. The field is 100 yards long, but they break it down into 10 yard increments. Your team gets four chances, called downs, to move the ball that 10 yards. If you can't move the ball 10 yards down the field after four downs, you lose possession. The other team gets to try. But if you do succeed in moving 10 yards or more, if you gain a minimum of 10 yards, that's called a first down. You now have another four chances to move another 10 yards, to move another first down. First down after first down after first down, you move all the way down the field to a touchdown. In football, a first down is a minimum gain of 10 yards. In the race to zero carbon, our first down is a minimum gain of a gigawatt of power. A gigawatt is a lot of power. So much, it's going to take the second half of this video to explain. The gigawatt is a good unit because it's large enough. It's like the 10 yards in football instead of measuring the football field in inches. This is not 10 inches. Keep in mind, each state uses a different amount of power. A small state like Rhode Island would use maybe two or three gigawatts. A large state like New York would be 40 or 50. That's a lot of first downs to get to zero carbon. Of course, you could shorten the field length with efficiency. So New York could try to keep it down to 40 gigawatts or get it even shorter, get it to 30 gigawatts. However many gigawatts your state is, you need to take it one first gigawatt down at a time. So why are we measuring our first down in gigawatts rather than emissions? Well, the reason for that is the game is actually played around power and emissions are a byproduct. Here's a football field. It's 100 yards long. And here is New Jersey's energy supply field measured in energy. Don't they look alike? So much alike. Looking at New Jersey's energy supply field, you can see how much energy the whole state consumes by type every year. This energy comes from burning fossil fuels. This is from zero carbon sources. Looking at it like a football field, it's like we're at the 20 yard line with 80% of the way to go to get that zero carbon touchdown. Now you might be thinking, okay, I get it. We gotta reduce our emissions. It's like a football field. It's one gigawatt at a time, whatever. Uh, so here. Let's put that gigawatt concept aside for a second and think about what this actually means on the field. What you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your energy supply field like a football field, except instead of yards or units of energy, you're gonna measure it in power plants. Why? Because you wanna take possession of the field. You wanna push the fossils off, and that means putting alternative energy supply on the field. And this field, it's not a spreadsheet. It's a physical space. It's your state, it's your county, it's your backyard. And these power plants are not abstractions. They are physical objects. So you wanna put these physical objects in this physical space. As a zero carbon coach, just like a football coach, you wanna know if your players can actually take the field. So you need to know the numbers and where these power plants would go. What you actually need to do to win this game is swap power plants. But it's not first power plant down, it's first gigawatt down or to be precise, first gigawatt equivalent down. So now we have come to the part where we talk about gigawatts. Here's what you need to understand. End use power delivered in gigawatt equivalents. First, what's a gigawatt? A gigawatt is a thousand megawatts. A megawatt is a thousand kilowatts. A kilowatt is a thousand watts. So a gigawatt is a billion watts. What's a watt? A watt is a unit of power. Here's an LED light bulb. It's 10 watts. So it's a really nice energy saver. And if you haven't already done so, you should replace all your lights with something like this. It's 10 watts, whether or not it's on or off. The watts is the power. Power and energy are different. If you want to calculate the energy, you have to say, how long is this light bulb going to be on for? If it's on for one hour, then it's 10 watts times one hour, or 10 watt hours. What if you want to keep it on all year? Well, a year has 24 hours 
365 days or 8,760 hours. So keep it on all year, it's 10 times 8,760 or 87,600 watt hours in that year. But it's still a 10 watt bulb. It's always 10 watts. Now it's the same way with a power plant. A one gigawatt power plant is one gigawatt whether it's on or off. Now, if you run this one gigawatt power plant at 100% all year, that's one gigawatt times 8,760 hours per year. So it's 8,760 gigawatt hours. But you know what? It's a pain to say 8,760 gigawatt hours. So people said, hey, why don't we just call that a gigawatt year? You know, or a gigawatt equivalent, a GWE. So one gigawatt equivalent is shorthand for the energy produced by a one gigawatt power plant running nonstop for one year. Of course, no power plant runs nonstop all year. They stop for breakdowns, for scheduled maintenance, for changes in demand. And there are other variables that come into play depending on the type of energy. If you're a solar power plant, you run when the sun shines, you slow down when it's cloudy, and you're off at night. If you're wind power, you run when it's windy and stop when it's calm. With all these variables, how are people supposed to calculate the time a power plant runs? The way people deal with this is to say, we're going to call the max output of a power plant the nameplate capacity. And then we're going to figure out over the course of a year, on average, how much of the time that plant will actually run. We'll call that the capacity factor. So actually, it's really easy to calculate the end use power delivered for any given power plant. You simply multiply the nameplate capacity by the capacity factor. Let's take a moment now to appreciate the equal sign. When you have an equal sign, what that says is that what's on one side of the sign has to equal what's on the other. But it doesn't have to be identical. This has profound implications. On this side, you have your one gigawatt equivalent. On the other, you can have any combination of things that add up to one gigawatt equivalent. You know, you could find that mythical one gigawatt power plant that runs perfectly all year, um, or two one gigawatt power plants that, you know, break down half the year, each of them, or, you know, two 500 megawatt plants that run perfectly all year. Or, you know, what about solar rooftop? You can get 1.3 million five kilowatt residential solar rooftop installations that run when it's sunny. Whatever configuration you use, you just have to make sure it adds up to one gigawatt equivalent or you don't get your first gigawatt down. Remember, this isn't just a math exercise. Whatever you come up with on paper, you have to execute on the ground. Football teams don't win with the doodles in the playbook. They have to go out and enact those little X's and O's in real life facing real human beings who want to crush them. In the race to zero carbon, you can't just wave your hands and say, oh, we'll put up a wind turbine somewhere. You have to face an approval process. I mean, seriously, this is just like, all right. Um, so this approval process is the real challenge. This would be like your game plan, all the X's and O's on the field. There, there are a lot of agencies that have to weigh in and approve any given project. And then you get, to your, you get to your stakeholders, you get to your community, and they say, hey, we don't want this thing in our backyard. They don't want it in their backyard. 